On this episode, I'm working my butt off again. What's new? We're gonna build foam footings. We're gonna lay down a bunch of two inch insulation to insulate my floor. And we're gonna tie in radiant floor. And then we're gonna pour some mud on top and call it a day. Boom, we're back. <clears throat> a couple days later, but we're back. Um, we're just trying to backfill. Red line is my floor. And this is just expensive putting gravel in and this stuff compacts really nice. So I'm bringing in the dirt. That was all piping. So I put it all in gravel. I don't want to compact on the pipes. Got my footings ready. I'm waiting on some uh, high PSI foam for under the footings. Maybe tomorrow. Morning. It's a Saturday. Working by myself today. Uh, here's what I got. You might laugh, but I built these foam footings. I'm gonna try. I went and bought this foam special. It's uh, 40 PSI, where everything else on the floor is 25 PSI. Because 25 is not enough for load bearing. For your footings, it's good enough for under a slab, but right here I have a huge point load coming down, carries a ton of weight. Plan calls for a four foot footing, but because of the foam, I went with a five foot footing. 60 inches by 60 inches gives you 3,600 inches times 40 PSI. That will hold 141,000 pounds, which is way over what I need. So I got to dig that out, get a nice, really perfectly level gravel. Same with these couple footings. And then I'm going to start working my way back with gravel, just cleaning everything up, working my way back. I don't want to use that tool right there, but that's my only choice. These are a little high too, I gotta dig them down. It's a test. I'm always testing stuff to see what works better. This may work, may not work, I don't know. So my first problem was I compacted everything too high. So I had to dig down. And running that pick is not a fun job at all. Good thing it's in the morning, not too hot yet, but I just dug and dug until I got down to my grade where I can put my gravel pretty hard to get things really level with the laser so you take this level and you kind of screed like you do concrete I'll sleep I'll do the I got another long level I'll do this way I'm trying to get side to side level the level doesn't fit so I got it on a bit of an angle Bearing weight on here, like you want it flat. You want that foam. If you're gonna do foam under your footings, you gotta put time into this to make it right. You can't have gaps, it'll lead to problems. So I kind of screwed up and got the pipe. I had to cut this footing around the pipe and I'll foam it in afterwards. Pre-cut everything, I'm gonna glue it all together. I could only find the uh, high density 40 PSI foam in one inch. So I had to stagger my joints and glue the two bottom pieces together to get my two inch that I was looking for on the floor. Gluing that together with spray foam worked dang good. Just got to give it a few minutes to set up and then it goes rock hard solid. It was awesome. All right, I got to give that about a half hour. And I can start grading back in this corner. Well, I got in too much of a hurry and I put that in without my vapor barrier. I'm tearing it out. It's got to be right.
many things going on here that I gotta kind of do the whole operation as I move out. Kind of annoying. Probably wondering why am I going through all this work? This foam. Why am I doing the footings? Would you buy a Yeti cooler that had a sheet of metal on the bottom? Nope. I don't, I want no utility bills. Every little bit of this that can suck heat, and I'm stopping. So, it's a lot of extra work, but it's gonna pay back big time in the end. The back of my footing right here is gonna hit concrete, so I'm gonna slide this in. And foam it. Okay, I'm tired. I dug those in. I got blisters. I had to put my gloves on. Now I gotta make this big hole. Probably six inches. I'm not looking forward to it. But I gotta keep moving. I wanna go home, I wanna sit on the couch, but I can't. So this was the day I pushed it too far. It was hot, really hot. It was a Saturday. I've been feeling all this pressure, this interest payment on this construction loan. I just, I just felt so much pressure. So I just started cranking. You'll notice my clothes start to turn a different color because they're saturated with sweat. And I worked and I worked. I mean, this took a good hour. It was brutal. But then I started feeling a little queasy. This didn't feel quite right. So I uh, stood up. Thought, I think I'm going to throw up. Yeah. So I walked outside, sure enough, I started throwing up. And then I sit there for a minute, it takes me a few minutes to get to my truck, turn the AC on, and my body starts cramping, my hands are cramping into little balls, I don't know what to do. So I drive home, I just get home, lay on the bed, and I'm shaking, freezing, heart rate's high, breathing high, cramping everywhere, miserable. My wife started putting salt and electrolytes in me, like spoon-fed. It probably took an hour and a half before I stopped shaking. I almost went to the ER. I've heat stroke, heat exhaustion, I don't know what it was. But I've never had that before and I've worked my whole life. It was not fun. But anyway, I pulled it back a little bit after that. So, let's we'll just keep working. Gotta keep building. I had the guys on this day. We decided it was easier to put the vapor barrier below the gravel so I could screed it out. We would lay the vapor barrier down, put some gravel, rake it out with the laser, and then I would take a level and screed it to a perfect flat so that we could lay down our two inch foam and it would be contacting everything everywhere. Okay, let's review. I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but I can't ever remember what I said in the last videos. Whole floor, two inches of foam, 25 PSI. The best I can find is 16 is required. Code is very vague on horizontal insulation. Got a lot on vertical insulation on the side of the foundation, but not much on this. Anyway, and then here I've got 40 PSI, which will hold footing weight. The whole thing is completely insulated, but the last place that I don't have insulated is here. If the concrete touches that, it's going to come work its way right through. So you need a thermal break. Where it was skinny, I just used foam and I sprayed it on there. And that also seals my vapor barrier. All right, so even though this is only half inch, you could even do it with the seal seal, the rolls of seal seal. Anything that will stop that from moving through. I don't know how it's gonna work. <clears throat> I'm gonna foam that in like that, all the way around, and then I'll have no concrete anywhere touching my slab. 100% insulated, that's the goal. All right, here we go. Once we got all that down, we needed to put some wire. There's a few different ways you can do this. There's little tackers that'll tack the pipe to your foam. And that's not just like uh, farm wire. That's actually an actual concrete remesh, it's called. It laid that down. It gives you six inch uh, pattern so that you can lay all your pipe and zip tie it down. It was, uh, it was just what I chose to do. There's a lot of ways you can do it. I didn't really want to spend the money on rebar on that floor. I knew I had a solid foundation, so. I skipped the rebar. 
Anyway, roll it out and get ready for some pipe. So this is my first roll of PEX I'm rolling out for my radiant floor. This is the wrong way to do it. Rolling that thing around like I'm gonna do is not how you do it. I built the wheel, you'll see it coming up, but that was a pain in the butt. So I just had to roll it around, lay out my uh, 12 inch grid, but it, it was, this is the hardest way you could do it, I think. I use wire ties coming out of those pipes to keep everything really solid, but once I got my runs down, I used little zip ties, tied everything to the floor. So it took me about a day, rolled out all the pipe, got it all tied down. Took a little picture from overhead, looks like this. Now we're gonna pour some concrete. 7 a.m. Before the sun comes up. Get ready to pour the floor. So we're really pushing hard because I gotta get all this concrete flat work in before winter's coming, and it's coming quick. So we're kind of raking out the gravel. Uh, a little coaching from my plumber. Helped me line out my plumbing. I've never done plumbing, but you can do anything if you want to. So I laid all the plumbing out, and we're getting ready to also do the two inch foam on this. This is the master bedroom. It's a slab on grade. Didn't really need a basement under it. We want to spend the money. So we just get this all prepped and get ready for some foam, some concrete remesh, some radiant pipe. If you didn't watch my other video on the house, this is two inch um, rigid foam, 25 PSI. It's good enough for underfloor, it'll hold your weight. So the reason I am going through all this effort is the earth is in the mid 50s. When I put the radiant heat in, we're gonna be pumping We'll be pumping 110 degree water through here, or glycol, trying to heat this place. And that 50 degree earth is going to be sucking all the heat it can take. So this thermal break, it's going to make it so much more efficient. And it's just going to, I don't want to pay utility bills, outrageous bills my whole life, so I'm putting the money in now. I only paid 3800 bucks for this insulation for this and the house, so it's not that bad. That'll pay itself off quick. But it's, we've been a day and a half just getting this in. It's a lot of work. But that's the benefit of building your own house. You get to upgrade everything for free because it's all your labor. So I'll try to get more documented, but um, it, it's just I'm so busy with work and then trying to do this on, on the side. It's hard. But I can just walk through and show you what I can show you. Anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, just trying to get this ready to pour this week. It's September and I gotta get ready for winter. I got all this stuff on the house to do too. I just, I'm not gonna do anything productive that makes it look like I'm building anything for a while. It's just dirt work and concrete right up until it starts freezing. Because once it starts freezing, you're done. If you don't have your stuff in, you're done. You guys that live in the warm climates, you don't know, but once it starts freezing, good luck. Anyway, slowly but surely. You know, I've been at this a year. I bought that machine a year ago, started digging on this property. I got another good full year. I don't know, I should have just stayed in my last house. Anyway, catch you on the next one.
on the radiant, um, you want to be between 250 and 300 on your loops, <clears throat> the length of all of your pipe that heads out and then comes back. Total of about 250 to 300 feet. So I've been going, it's hard to see from here. Find a different way to show you that, but got this manifold. It's called Easy Route. Okay, today I can show you a bunch of stuff because the guys are gone and I don't have so much pressure to get so much done so fast. It's Saturday, so I can slow down and video a little bit. Um, we got all of our foam in, got all of our rebar tied. Just not much to show you there, you just tie rebar. It's nothing to learn. So now I'm running my PEX lines, my uh, radiant heat, and I'm being like extremely anal on how these are laid out because I have all this stuff I want to bolt down in the shop, maybe a car lift someday, and I need a very, very detailed, specific map of how these pipes are. They can't vary at all. So I pulled measurements. I started my first line six inches off of the outside wall, then one foot six, two foot six, three foot six. So I know all the way across exactly what it will be. If you look down these, you can tell just, just as straight as I can get. I want that perfect so that I can find places to put bolts. So what I've been doing, you can't chalk a line. If I'd have been paying attention before I put the rebar in, I would have chalked out a grid and that would have made it so nice, but I didn't. You can't chalk a line here. Pulling the string takes forever. It's in the way. So what I'm doing is using my laser. I set it up, laser, and then I mark all the way. I know, I know crazy but I want this perfect I don't ever want to hit a pipe and I want to drill down whatever I want in this shop so I'm on this pipe on this radiant I've got a manifold down there lines run down and you want these lines these loops to be about 250 to 300 feet you know I'm all to be as close to the same length as you can get so like this one comes down and I had to loop back and forth two times and then back to get my 280 I've done two loops that way make sure you stay out of your or bolt areas your footing areas I have a I'm, I'm short one pipe but I have a big supply to a manifold here which is gonna run these two zones because it was just too far away that's my supply I got to get some more pipe and then I run the return all the way back I have a lot of pipe to lay still Show you this manifold. This is my manifold system. These are called Easy Route. So you can get a supply and a return in each one. And you'll notice, well, I just cut this one off. I just came off of my roll. And right, right here. See that? 750 feet. Come down a little farther. 745 feet so it's all it's numbered and labeled so this one started at a thousand and I cut it off at 755 so that's 255 foot loop 250 so I ended up being 283 and then down so I'm gonna start another loop I'm gonna swing out down however many it takes to get me 250 280 and back and out and back and out and back all day so to start a zone pull out a little pipe this uh radium floor pipe really flexible you can get a 12 inch turn maybe even an 8 inch turn pretty easy i'm gonna go to my next zone pull up about enough that he can we can get to the valves and I lock it down with the tie. You gotta tie this end off so you can pull on it.
your supply and your return run really close together right here, which is not good. So as soon as possible, separate those so you're not robbing heat from your outgoing water. And then I just pull it on down. tight down, down. And that really lines it up when you pull it nice and snug and then now I've got these 12 inch going the other way so I get to the end of my run got to loop back and forth on a 12 inch spacing same deal same perfect layout I do that until I calculate to get back there at that distance that I'm trying to get now this might not look too impressive to you but that was a week's worth of work with three guys and we worked our butt off to get that laid down. It was tedious, but that's probably the best money spent on my whole entire project. If you've ever wondered how they lay concrete down without using uh, like screed boards, he just finds a spot about 12 feet apart as wide as his vibra strike, as you'll see in a minute, and he lasers that down until he's right on the money, and he'll make this little X in there, and he'll move over to the next spot, make another X, and then he connects the lines with this vibra strike, and it, it laid down nice. It's rained on this floor a bunch since then, there's a couple of low spots, which there always are, but it ended up really nice and flat. So when you're pouring these big floors, it's 5,000 square feet. Really the only way to get this finished done is with these riders. So this rider's got um, plates, pans. If you look close, the pans on the bottom of there that hooks into the blades. And that works like a mag trowel, where you scrub the surface down, flatten it out, and then Miguel here will come by with the finished blades, and they'll just keep going for hours on this thing and burn it in until it's just just a beautiful finish. It's really the only way to do it. Anyway, I ran out of my video for the closing on this, but uh, that's the end of it. I'll see you on the next one, fellas.